All right, hello everybody. One of the requests that came from the training was understanding a little bit more around how the tool works. So this video is going to take us quickly through how the tool calculates things so that facilitators have a better understanding of the tool. One of the things that I would say though is you don't want to go into too much detail in your workshops because it will confuse the workshop and it will slow things down. So it's fine for you guys to understand as facilitators how it works, but um, actually showing some of the calculations pages that I'll show now is not going to be helpful to running your workshop. So one of the quick tips um, before we start is to come across to the up arrow over here um, when you're presenting on a projector so that you fit more of the screen in. So what you see uh, as the tool is presented down the bottom here is your uh, information about location, your module one, your module two, your module three, some results, uh, and then the definitions and finish. What you don't see uh, is that there is a whole bunch of hidden tabs that are uh, as part of the tool here. So for now, I'll unhide all of these. Uh, there's a method in the madness here. So you'll see that your ones in these bigger than and less than, so there's P and there's three. So these are your translation tabs. So people who are doing translations, when you do it, this is where you will, well, I will paste your translations. Um, P covers the P one and two, and then three covers module th the Ws and module three. And the idea here is that many groups only want to translate the module three, whereas if you want the whole tool translation, you need to do P as well. So there's not much to understand there other than this is where you put the the translations um, and where it calculates which, um, which language the tool will be done in. So I will just hide these now that we know what they are. You will also see some P so some minuses and some pluses for P and for three. Uh, essentially what this is, is that it helps me paste data between tools. Um, so I can pre-fill all your data in module in the plus, and I can copy all your data out uh, when we start to aggregate data together. So that's what these minus and plus are. Um, so I will hide them, but you, sh you, don't, you shouldn't really Need, need to use them um, uh, at this stage. Uh, and we will hide them. What we are then looking at is some calculation tabs and some sorting. So um, the progress tab, this is essentially a calculation of where you are up to in the tool and how new modules emerge when you finish previous modules. So um, it basically pinpoints where you are if there's a no, um, and then some modules are skipped where you don't do them as well. So for instance, um, this the data that the junk data that's in here at the moment was only assessing um, twice in module two. So they say no, but it's also skipped. So it proceeds. So that's just telling you how uh, it, it just allows data to emerge once you've entered previous data. And the sort tab, this is a, uh, hasn't been cleaned up. It's not really for presentation, but this is where some of our, our lists come in and our um, uh, sort functions. So some of these you'll see are why you the tool is linear at the moment because um, calculations are done and, and sorts and filters are done uh, in order to get there. So you don't really need to, to worry too much about, about that. In terms of the calculations, the key calculations are in these red tabs, one, two, and three, so for each module. So we go across to one. What uh, this essentially does is it takes each of the crops by season in module one and it pulls together the uh, extent of area, the yield, the income and the gross margin, uh, calculates that into the area and the value of benefit and the economic value, so for gross margin and for production, and then sorts it across. So when you are looking at the results in one, what you're seeing is that final calculation. 
So in terms of how it calculates, there's no weightings applied here. It's a simple count of the economic value. You'll see that economic value, um, that economic value is simply the, um, the tonnage times the income. So all it is is saying that if you have um, 2 million hectares and you yield at one ton per hectare, then you yield 2 million tons. And if each of those tons is worth $2, each of each ton is worth $2 a ton at sale, then you have a $4 million uh, economic value. So fairly simple there, it's just straight economic value of production. So that's module one. If we go to module two, it's a little bit more complexity here and you'll see that there's sorts, sort functions that come in. But um, on this side, you just have all of the things that have been entered in module one and module two. So it's actually um, uses a search function to come across um, what it does. How does it calculate? So it takes the crop season combinations. We already know the expected yield that comes in. And then for each challenge, we have hectares impacted. So that is this side, percentage of area impacted. Uh, we have the essentially across the 10 years, the yield that is likely to be lost. So we can calculate if we have an expected yield across 10 years, but then we have these events that come in that will reduce our expected yield under a changing climate. Um, so the way that that is calculated uh, is on a, a middle point in each of these categories. So 10% for uh, up to 20%, 30% for 20 to 40%, 60% here, and then 90% here. So it's just taking the midpoint of each of these. So that's what this is saying, 10%, 30%, 60%, and 90%. So that's the, the first assumption made within the tools calculation. Um, and that's just basically applied then, thinking about current yield, putting it into percentages, um, that's the only real calculation that comes. And then it's a sort function and sums. So these are your um, initial sums across a single factor and then two factor. And as you work across into three factor. So that is how um, uh, that calculation is occurring. Um, there's also a few little things around if it applies across multiple uh, multiple seasons, then there's calculations that come in there, but they're a bit complex to describe. But basically, if it's an annual, then the impacts will be split across seasons because we're summing by season here. Uh, you won't see it here because the, the data that's in there was a single season analysis, but um, these will populate across additional seasons where you have an annual or a perennial crop. So that is how module two calculates, but most of the assumptions and calculations um, are in module three. So just as a reminder, this is what module, module three looks like. And essentially you've got in, in the top box, you're doing an economic calculation. So it's saying that um, compared to current or uh, climate impacted yield, you've got a potential improvement in percentage. So that is then transferred to tons per hectare. And you've also got a cost, which is per hectare or per ton, which is then um, exchanged to tons per hectare. So that's the economics. And then this, these are the contextual factors. So how does that work when you're doing your calculations? So we've got our adaptation, our uh, topic and our hazard. We've got the potential loss value here. And then we are calculating the expected yields, um, uh, the value of improvements. So again, just saying that if there's a 10% a, a benefit on current yield, we know current yield, so we can apply that to tons per hectare. Uh, and that to total value is across the area that's impacted. So, and then we have the, the, the cost of implementation that is, is normalized to tons per hectare as well. 
uh, creating this this net negative. So the other area, and probably where the most com confusion will come in, is around how we assign the uh, numerical values to categorical data. So these are all categorical here. And when we go into calculation, they have to be numerical for this to work. So we've got to transfer categorical data to numerical data. So we do this um, through this table here where you can see the values. So um, for ease, if you say it's easy, you score a point. Somewhat difficult, you score half a point. And very difficult, you score um, uh, 0 0.01 of a point. So it works again down that way. This is around timing. If it's ready to go or if it's within one month of now, then you score one point. And as you go down, um, you you score less and less as you go down. So these are essentially how the the categorical data is transferred to numerical data. A little bit more complex with the government and private sector case because if it if low value is assigned to something, then it doesn't get as low a score um, because it doesn't matter as much. So that's a there's two uh, lines of data that align to the number. The other thing is the flags or concerns. So these are over here. Um, how do we know if something is a concern or not? And it's essentially when it's the, the lowest of the categorical um, data, then it's assigned a concern. But um, to make it clear, this column BB here. So if you say very difficult, it's flagged as a concern. Um, in the time to impact, if you say it's um, within 10 years or not within 10 years, they're both flagged as concerns. So if you're curious as to how things are calculated and what score is applied, you can open that three tab, go to columns BB and BC um, and observe how the scoring has been done. One thing that you will see though, is that these are password protected. So if you try and change anything, it will tell you that this is protected. And the reason why I don't want people changing this is because it's a global tool. And when I aggregate this up, I can't have different weightings that come at different uh, levels. So all of the calculation tabs are password protected. You won't be able to change them. If you see a particular problem with any of these, then please send me an email or a WhatsApp and we can discuss um, the weighting structure. Um, but it has to be applied commonly across uh, the, the rollout of the tool globally. Um, essentially then what you'll see in here is um, a lots of sort and filter functions that, um, that pull out all of the calculations that then get you to the interface that you'll show at the workshop. Um, the same with these weightings that are applied. Um, you'll see that they're, they're summed um, and applied across when we get to the, the final scores and then filtered. So again, when we talk about linearity in the tool, the problem is that whenever you uh, filter something, if you were to add data after that, the filter will change and the subsequent data changes order. That's where we get into troubles with, with the data that's added. So that's, the, what's, that's why that limitation is there. Um, if you have any questions, then please send me an email. I'm happy to, to discuss any problems or issues or understandings that you might have to, to work through. Thank you.